Charles uh, Christensen, what a pleasure. It's really nice to see you again. I'm really sorry that I lost all the footage of us having a trail of chat. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, slightly different. Um, definitely not. On a chairlift in Hakuba, about to go rip some fresh powder. But it's still good to see you, Warner. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Tell me, tell me about your, your experience at the Olympics. Uh, experience was awesome. So I went, uh, let's see. Courtney and I went Olympics first, Japan second. Yep. Um, so we dropped in uh, the day after the opening ceremonies. Um, it was pretty sweet. The... Uh, you know, a couple fits and starts. Um, turns out you need an international driver's license to rent a car there. Um, so that was kind of a bummer at the airport. Um, so, uh, but luckily, there's a bullet train that went straight there. And turns out you didn't need a car anyway. Um, or you wouldn't be able to read directions if you had a car. How about that? Yeah. And, uh, and so Google Maps doesn't work over there. I guess Waze was working for some people. Yeah. So Google Maps doesn't work because they don't want to disclose. From what I heard is... Uh, South Korea doesn't want to disclose all of their geographic locations um, because they're so close to North Korea. So for strategic reasons, wow. um, and and Naver Maps was like the one to use. Okay, uh, and that one could translate Korean into English, but it wasn't perfect, and it certainly had a hard time kind of um, uh, picking up some of the Olympic venues that were kind of plopped down, you know, right before. But mm-hmm. were you using you know, the you know, Olympic trainers really not a were you using the What's Olympic that? app to find the venues? I, I thought that was really helpful. Yeah, but, Olympic map saves our uh, our app. Um, and then it was it was funny. I, I saw some of the stuff that you're going through, um, and the one word that I could pick out in Korean was Jimbu. So that's like the main train station. We'd always uh, we had an Airbnb pretty close to that, uh-huh. uh, and so we would kind of just operate out of there. So once we got to Jimbu, everything was fine. Yeah, that's so funny. That's the same with me. It's like, I was like, all right, I had to get to Jimbu to get back to the airport. And it's like, if you say Jimbu, everybody knows, but not, no one knows anything else. No one knew. Yeah, it was it, it was crazy. So um, I learned as much about the, the area as I could. It's a fantastic place. It's really cool. People are awesome, super nice. Um, the first day uh, that we were there, uh, we were supposed to watch the men's downhill uh, canceled due to win. Actually, didn't see any Alpine events because um, they were all canceled. Oh, so, uh, but, but but got to catch um, uh, red when the the gold medal for snowboarding uh, biathlon was amazing. It's probably the most beautiful ski venue I, I, I've ever seen. I mean, the the biathlon complex next to the Nordic track and then the ski jump kind of outrun was also the same as the Big Air landing. So they did a really good job of kind of making this uh, cool little uh, world. I, I just don't know when it's going to be used again. Yeah, so. that's a classic problem <laughs> with these places, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. But um, people are nice. I totally agree. There's so many great things. Um, one of the other things you said was, did, did you say you lost your wallet in? Oh, yeah, yeah at Jindu. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, had a great time, or maybe too much fun. Um, uh, celebrating that first gold medal uh, for the U.S. team and for the Olympics, uh, for, for, for USA. Um, transferring back, I think, from women's moguls that night uh, back to the, you know, uh, um, the mainframe and lost my wallet at Jinbu. Woke up in the morning. Um, I think we were going to, uh, uh, we we're going to go something else that day. We we're just trying to go to the women's GS. That actually also got canceled okay. that day. Anyway, lost my wallet came back, went to the main Olympics lost and found, and they returned it like it was no big deal. All the money in it. I mean, and I was ecstatic, um, high-fiving people. Uh, and is isn't completely normal, but, but the, 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 it wasn't exceptional to them. You know, yeah. to them, returning lost property is something that you do. So it was pretty cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. It's kind of a, it's a great kind of twist and well, it's a great way just to show what the culture is there and what they care about and honesty is a big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, one of the other funny things you said on our chairlift ride just before we got to the top. Was, <laughs> I was going to recreate the chairlift ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nice and snowy, beautiful day. We we're getting some epic skiing in the backcountry, but just before <laughs> that, 
Um, you were talking about training post uh, athletic career, and what do you have oh, to yeah. focus on? Is it still called training when you're not <laughs> don't have an athletic career? I think it's just called working out or exercising. Touche, um, touche. Maybe yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, the um, let's put it this way: when you start evaluating the gym and the hotel, and considering it seriously as a place where you could get a workout that that might be a sign um, <laughs> that your life has changed that's very true I yeah because weren't you saying like i don't know like so, me without a goal i i have no chance of doing anything um yeah your goals your eagles become uh a lot different um you know like beach season uh kind of like a, just just bad jokes almost <laughs> Uh, oh, you start awesome. yelling at yourself about something you ate the night before. I mean, it's, it's just hilarious. Like none of those things you had to worry about ever. Another things you should have worried about, probably shouldn't worry about still, um, are, uh, yeah, creep in for sure. And they, they certainly affect your, uh, um, workout. I find myself, you know, finding that competitive edge in the, you know, spin classes, um, which is just one of the saddest, saddest things. Uh, I really like the, um, uh, uh, the option because you can actually compete against other people and they have little measurements uh, up on the screen as to how you're doing and you can kind of look over and, you know, see like, okay, bike, bike 13, like, you know, someone's beating me. Oh, wait, what are they doing over there? And, that's too funny, that's too funny. But I get it, man. You got to get that. You got to get that energy out somewhere. Like You got to do it somehow. I mean, it's yeah. It, it has to go somewhere. So what? Whatever. And what kind of skiing are you are you fired up about now? Oh man. Um, well, so when I saw you, uh, you know, uh, we were I don't know what do you call that backcountry skiing. That was yeah, uh, powder. That was uh, that was Japow. pretty epic powder skiing. Japow. Um, you know, wh- basically whatever boards I can get on uh, my feet, just trying to go rip, have a great time. Um, just got some. Uh, some some awesome true backcountry skis. So I did that afterwards with a guide for two days. That was first time I've ever done that. That was phenomenal. So really just kind of expanding the portfolio of skiing um, and realizing, uh, you know, that it's all good. So skiing is still the number one kind of, you know, happiness creator, stress releaser, like soul, you know, uh, cleansing, whatever you want to call it. How many World Cups did you race on Dodge Boots? All of them. Four. I'll just say all, I mean, literally all of them. Exactly. I think, I think that says a lot, man. And I, I scored my best results with them. Um, yeah, the, I'll never forget when, um, riding up in Bonsko and, um, uh, in Bonsko in Bulgaria and, you know, going up the trail with, uh, with Axel and he looks over and, he, and he's like, wow, first Warner. Now you, huh? So what are these things? And, you know, let's just asking all about it. It was pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, peak interest. It's good shit. Yeah. And he's one of the people yeah. that is interested. Like he's, he's a guy always open and curious, you know, and there's some closed minded skiers and some open minded ones, but great to see you. Um, our chairlift ride has got to be over, and hopefully this one won't get deleted. Um, oh, my God. No, how about we actually go back to a ski area, sit on a chairlift, have a ride. You know, you can where? take away the powder. Like I said, I'll, I'm willing to compromise. I'll do it in the – why don't we do it in a flywheel? Let's do that. We'll do it on the bikes. They don't like you talking in there, um, looking at other people, you're doing anything. They got the little weights, actually. You can go like this on the side. But or I swear to God, it would be pretty funny. <laughs> That would be really funny. We should do that. We should do that. But have a great day, man, and uh, it's great to see you. Thanks, bud.